Okay, we'll make a start. Um, good afternoon and welcome everyone to today's session on transitioning from CAS desktop to CAS 360 with a special host and client of ours, um, Anne Wright from the Field Group. Welcome, Anne. How are you? Thanks, Daniel. I'm very well. Um, we truly appreciate your time in joining us today and we're very grateful to have you on board and um, willing to share your experience and uh, go through exactly what you went through not only as part of the migration process, but also in learning the software and then getting the most out of the software to deliver it to your clients at an even better level of service. So thank you for joining us, Anne. You're welcome. Um, look, just before I go into things, my name is Daniel. Um, I've been at BGL for a little while. Um, I've seen the, the the migration from CAS DOS to CAS Windows and now CAS 360. And um this is a product that definitely puts a smile on my face, the same as Simple Fun 360. We love talking about our products and what they do and the benefits that they can bring. But really, most importantly, um, what we love is connecting people to, to who we are and not just what we do. And um, we know that our products make a difference, but we also know that what we do to support the products and the people that we have behind our products also makes a difference and is just as important in any decision that you make when it comes to software and the software that you choose to deploy. So for today's session, it's going to be quite simple. And the thing that we would like to, to really go through today is just a client's journey. It's nice for you to hear things from us. However, it's better to hear things from clients and people that have actually gone through the process migrating from CAS desktop to CAS 360. And we're going to get into a number of questions and we'll go through a whole heap of things that I'd like to go through with Anne to make sure that we cover a lot of the basis for maybe concern or questions that you may have and really make sure that we just mitigate any fear or any um, uncertainty around the, 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 the reservations people have so that you can really step into the migration process with confidence and the assurance that you need to make the most out of the, 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 the CAS 360 product. Just during the session, I also have Damien that's joining us from the BGL client success team. Damien will be taking questions. So if you do have any questions, please submit them through the Q&A function and we will do our best to answer those. If questions come up that um, you know we wanna to bring to a more open forum, we will do that also. And I'm pleased to tell you also that we will have the slides and the recording available to you after the webinar. So check your inboxes and you will get a, um, a recording and obviously a copy of the slides. So today's agenda is quite simple um, and really to the point. And I want to talk a little bit about corporate compliance and the importance of corporate compliance to your business. We're then going to talk a little bit about the future of CAS Desktop and what the future of CAS Desktop is going to look like and just some of the things that you need to be aware of as a CAS Desktop user. I'm then going to talk a little bit about CAS 360 and really focus on six key reasons why you really need to consider the move across and just some of the real benefits that you'll get out of it. We're then going to deep dive into a client story with, um, with Anne Wright from the Field Group, and we're going to go through her experience and what she went through as part of the process and then some of the benefits that they're getting out of the software now. We'll discuss the transition process from CAS Desktop to CAS 360, what you will gain from the product, and then we're going to talk a little bit about price and also talk a little bit about value. So... Let's just start off with corporate compliance, an important part of your business. One of the things with corporate compliance that, that I know and after many years have come to realize is that the fees that come from the corporate compliance function that you provide to your clients is an important part of your, your firm's overall revenue mix. And it's not really given as much attention that it probably deserves and or the resources allocated that it requires to be able to run a really strong function that is ensuring that your clients meet their compliance needs from ASIC's perspective. But one thing that I can say is that it is really a critical part of your service offering to clients. Your clients are paying you to do corporate compliance work 
to make sure that they're at all times compliant with the requirements of ASIC. They depend on you and your professional knowledge and expertise to ensure that they are basically left alone by the regulators because we know that by not being left alone or doing the wrong thing, then there are all sorts of things like fines or penalties and other things that you know, the clients really don't want to be on the receiving end of. So they, they trust you to keep them above board, to do the right thing, and they pay you good money to do that. And as we go forward, and we know that some things will be a little bit more complex, especially around the director ID changes, they're going to depend on you more and more. And you really need to ensure that you're not only across the developments that are taking place, but that you're also able to deliver to them a great service and also ensure that you are um, having them in a position where they're meeting their compliance regulations and requirements. Um, I'm not going to go too much in director ID. We've done a lot about that, but I will embark on that a little bit with Anne as we go through the process. But yeah, there's lots of things that we've built within the product to make the whole process really easy. And then when it comes to your whole corporate compliance, you know, what are you charging? And what are you charging for, cha for, for, for changes? What are you charging for the registers that, that you maintain for the preparation of the annual review? Um, and it's a really important question to ask because with the charge, I also encourage you to look at what's it actually costing you to produce or to maintain a corporate compliance function for your clients. Um, when it comes to charging, um, I know that many clients charge somewhere between $200 and $350 per year for the maintenance of the register. Then some charge also for the annual review and the preparation of the annual review. And then some also charge for the maintenance of the registers. But I really do encourage you to look at what you're charging and to look at um, what you're providing and making sure that you remain competitive in this space. And what I mean by competitive is that don't downplay the value that you bring to the clients through the function that you manage for them being the asset corporate compliance function. It is a really important function. And what I'm also encouraging you to do is make sure that you're reviewing your processes. And one of the things that CAS360 does is it forces you to review your processes. And one of the things that I know that it does is that it really does drive down a lot of the costs associated with delivering or getting certain outcomes. So what you're charging is important. What you're paying for your software is also important, but also what are the inputs into your process that you could really improve on or reduce to then ultimately deliver a better outcome? Now, with CAS360, one of the great things that we've done with that and the way that we've really embraced the ecosystem is we allow CAS360 to communicate and connect with multiple applications within our ecosystem to allow you to deliver one outcome. But what's beautiful within the CAS360 product is that you can also deliver one experience to your clients in the way documents are delivered, in the way documents are signed, in the way templates are set up. And really what you're delivering to your clients is a consistent, um, really strong, in some cases, strong branded um, outcome and really a process that they not only become familiar with, but it's so much more easier for them to embrace. And more importantly, so much easier for you to be able to manage and ensure that you're getting the right outcomes at all times. So corporate compliance is an important part of your business. Don't downplay it. Give it the attention it deserves. Review your processes. Make sure that you're charging for the service that you provide. And really, ultimately, using the ecosystem partners to deliver great outcomes and then using the processes within the software, and especially in CAS 360, to deliver to your clients one experience. And that's something that we are really big on is delivering one experience so that your clients, whenever they get a notification or a form from CAS360, they know exactly what to do with it, how to deal with it, how to respond to ensure that then you get back all the necessary notifications and workflows to get the right outcomes. Um, 
let's talk a little bit about the future of CAS desktop. And this is an important point and something that we need to just speak about. And we speak about it very openly. We don't hide anything. There is no end of life set. So we haven't come out and said that CAS desktop will end on a particular date. Now, while we would like to have it going indefinite, it won't be possible because there will come a time that we will have to turn it off. And the reason that we need to do that is because the changes in regulations and the way that registers will be maintained and managed going forward into the future will be different. And we won't be developing those new ways and systems and processes and means of communication in CAS desktop. Next year, you will see a CAS desktop update released, which will reflect the ASIC price changes because we know that the ASIC fees go up pretty much every year. Um, the director ID changes are not included in CAS desktop. But when it comes to what do we potentially see as the last date for the update of, uh, for, sorry, a cutoff date for CAS desktop, we potentially see is June 2023 as the date where it could be an end of life for CAS desktop. Now, this is purely based on the modernizing business register rollout. Um, they do intend for it to be released around that time. Now, we know that while they may say that it will be released, we also know that it's very high potential that it's not released. And if it's not, then we will make our decision accordingly. But roughly, you can really um, plan around 2023 as being the last date. The one thing that I can say is that um, there's been a, a great number of clients that are moving across that are taking the step. And then while there's been some at times hesitancy, and obviously there's been a little bit of you know resistance to it, the real benefits that they've received once moving across have really, in a sense, not only blown the clients away, but they've also come back and said, I wish I'd done this earlier. And you know, this is one of the things that we're going to tap into with Anne, and um, we're going to we're going to discuss this very very soon. But just a couple of little things: why CAS 360? And these are these are just six key reasons which I think are really important. I'm going to go through these really quickly. We want to kill the spreadsheet, and really, CAS 360 is about better workflow and better organizing your workflow and your compliance requirements. Now, I know, and I've seen this happen multiple times where People are using CAS desktop and using spreadsheets to manage things like annual reviews or annual review payment dates or managing you know, reminders and follow-ups, et cetera, et cetera. CAS 360 kills the spreadsheet. It also kills the need for calendar systems and reminder systems and other systems to ensure that you are meeting your obligations. And what CAS 360 does is it allows you to easily manage your correspondence and deadlines. Because what we have is that with CAS Desktop, you'd have traditionally a system where you would actually go to ASIC to get information. CAS 360 is different insofar as that we push information to you to ensure that you at your fingertips have all the necessary information and data that you need to ensure that you are meeting your client's corporate compliance needs. We have a very simple and easy to use document generation and delivery system. Yes, you can still print things out and you can send them to clients in an envelope if you have clients that, that still deliver that. You can still do that. However, what we encourage is the whole method of electronic delivery, electronic signing. And you'll see there, my next point is digital signing, where we've got three um, digital signing providers integrated in the system, being Adobe, um, DocuSign, and also FuseSign, which is our latest one. And um, They've also come in at really competitive prices, which really makes the, the, the cost of the digital signature about the same price, if not less than the cost of a stamp. And that's something that you need to really look at and or consider because it's not about the stamp, it's about what it takes you to get the envelope ready to be able to put the stamp on it. That really is the thing that costs you. We also know that it reduces fines. Um, and because you're better managing the process and the alerts and the debt, the, the ASIC debt requirements. And then the other really important reason is the ecosystem integration, where we're integrated with document providers, and there's more and more coming to that. We're also now adding in the next um, couple of months, we're going to be adding the ability to 
um, incorporate a company directly from without, within CAS 360 and buy a constitution for less than $100, including GST. So that we're, we're doing all these things to make it really easy for you. And um, the other part with all of this is that CAS 360 not only includes companies, but it then also includes a full trust register which allows you to easily manage things like your unit trust, discretionary trusts, hybrid trusts, and includes all the supporting documentation, integrations, digital signing, et cetera, to ensure that you can meet the requirements um, for the trust management that you do. So I'm just gonna spend a couple of moments on a couple of screens. And the really important one is the, the main screen of CAS 360. And the main screen of CAS 360, think of it as a workflow screen. So from within this screen, you've got a number of filters which tells you things around annual reviews or document deadlines, company debt um, alerts. You can see that on the left-hand side of your screens, but the filters allow you to get into the data and to understand what's going on. Um, you can see on the left-hand side, we have a very simple to use navigation um, bar, which very easily at a glance, you can see exactly what area of the software you'll be going to once you venture into any of those areas within the ribbon bar. But really importantly, what I really want to focus on where CAS 360 is so different is the way that it pushes information to you. And in this area of CAS 360, we've got an alerts area. And in this alerts area, you can see that the first icon um, is really all about your annual reviews. Now, you can see there that we have various colors for various statuses. Green mean that you've received the review, whereas the, the, the orange is basically telling you that the, the annual review is overdue. So there's all this stuff that we push to you. And so very easily from a pretty much a traffic alert system and a colored, color coded system, you can see where all your clients annual reviews are at any particular point in time. To then generate the annual review, simply click on go to annual reviews and it will allow you to generate the annual review and deliver it to your clients. So this whole area of alerts is really, really important. Um, you can also see that the second one talks about the outstanding debt with ASIC alert. So that's the, the second one from the left. And that there is pushing to you information about what your client's outstanding debt with ASIC status is. Now, from within this screen, you can not only send reminders, you can also refresh balances, but you can also then pay directly from the screen and you can prompt your clients to do the same. So once again, we're pushing information to you and at a glance and through a filter, you can very easily see which of your clients have got outstanding debt. Similarly, um, we've got this, the one that we've added just recently, which is really around the director IDs. Now, the last column tells you which of your clients have you've got the director IDs for versus those which you haven't. And once again, through a traffic light system, you can very easily manage the whole director ID process. Now I'm going to get Anne in a moment to go through the whole process and how it's really benefited her, but we've basically done all the heavy lifting for you from the documentation to the instructions, to the correspondence that you send to your clients, to managing the workflow. We have managed the whole problem process or the, the whole problematic part of the process for you and we make it very easy for your clients to then be able to do what they need to do with very clear instructions to ensure that they are registering according to the requirements um, and then the last one really is and i've got these the wrong way around but it's okay is the the third column which is your your lodgement dates now that column there is pretty much a column which alerts you as to the document status and the lodgement status of your documents. So when you go to generate a document, for example, Form 484, you have 28 days to lodge it. This notification here is telling you exactly when the, um, the document is, is due. It's also prompting you um, 14 days before, seven days before on the day, and it easily allows you to send reminders to your clients directly from the alert. So this whole process of us getting data from ASIC, pushing it to you on a daily basis, and then alerting you with the reminders necessary for you to be able to get a really good and clear understanding of where all your compliance work is at, and the status of things like your annual review, your documents, your ASIC debt, and then also our most recently added, our director IDs. 
So just think of the CAS 360 screen as a workflow screen, which pushes information to you and helps you deliver the whole compliance process. Now we'll get into the good stuff. Um, you're probably sick of hearing from me. Um, and um, I just want to introduce you to Anne Wright from the field group. Um, Anne, welcome to Thank today's you. session. How are you going? Yeah, well, thanks, Daniel. Um, look, I've, I've been through a few few bits and pieces here and um, I've gone through, you know, just some of the things about CAS Desktop and CAS 360. Um, what I'd like to go through with you really is just if you could just give us a little bit of an introduction about yourself, who you are, where you're from, what you do, um, maybe an indication as to how many combined companies and trusts you look after. That would be fantastic. All right. Well, um, I'm from the field group. Uh, we're an accounting firm at uh, Churnside Park in Melbourne's Outer East. Um, currently, we're looking after about 1,200 companies in CAS 360. Uh, I couldn't tell you the exact <laughs> number of trusts, but uh, <laughs> it's quite a few trusts. We're still um, working on adding those in. Yep. Um, when it comes to your role at the field group, um, you know, what exactly is your role and um, how much of your time do you spend on the corporate compliance function? Yeah, well, uh, I'm the corporate compliance manager at the field group. Um, and I've been doing that for over 20 years now. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that is that is my primary role. Um, I do other things as well, but um, that's my primary role. And um, before you jumped on the CAS 360, um, obviously, you know, you, you're doing things in CAS desktop. Yes. Um, when did you jump across to CAS 360? Um, so it's coming up five years in January, I believe. Um, we actually switched over while it was still in the beta mode. Yeah. Um, yeah, and here we are five years later. And that was a very long time ago, and I think that was the month before it was released to the public. Yes. Because it was released on the 22nd of February 2017, so okay. it was about a month before. Right. Which is amazing. But look, if you could just do a little bit of a contrast between the way that you used to say, for example, prepare an annual return or prepare a, a form 484 and then the process of not only generating it, but then also passing it through to your clients or sending it through to your clients and how you used to manage the process and then get it back and then maybe the follow-ups you used to do. Sure. That would be that would be amazing. Yeah, well, um, look, we, we, we transitioned to being paperless um, prior to switching to CAS 360. Um, so we were sending lots of things by email, but it still meant, you know, downloading forms, preparing a covering letter or email, um, sending things out to clients. Then they'd have to print it off, scan it to send it back to us or put it in the post. Um, so obviously a big advantage of, of CAS 360 is being able to send it from within the software. We do use DocuSign, um, but it's also possible to send things by email. Yep. Um, from within, within the software and um, so then the email comes back um, DocuSign obviously uh, lots of clients have adopted that um, makes it easy for them as well because they don't need to print things um, so sometimes we have things back within minutes um, come straight into my inbox there's also a, a copy stored within the software um, so obviously there's lots of efficiencies there so Obviously, you would have got a little bit of resistance when it comes to the digital signing, right? How did you go about communicating that to your clients? Yeah, well, it's true there. And we still do have some people who don't like it. They want it by email. and um, <laughs> That's never going to change. <laughs> there's a handful of clients who still want post. And to be honest, they're mostly older clients. So I respect that. Um I think over time, because we're sending our tax returns by DocuSign as well, people are getting more used to it. Other, other businesses are doing this type of thing as well. I know I've had DocuSign from a, a medical um, surgery. So people are becoming more familiar with it. And I've found that some clients who initially resisted are now happy um, to do it. And especially during that lockdown period, um, clients just recognise that it was allowing us to get things done that otherwise could have been quite difficult. And and then do you still keep the folders in the office? 
gel binders? No, no, we actually went through, it was a mammoth task. Um, we went through and scanned all of those. Um, so we keep those electronically now and return the originals to clients. Yeah, where do you keep them all electronically within CAS 360? Um, we actually have a copy. We use a, a separate document management system. Yep. Uh, so we do have a copy in there, but of course it's a great backup that we can always go into CAS 360 and access any of the documents there as well. And that's a very common process, right, Anne, is that a lot of people are scanning the, 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 the old binders and there's some really clever readers out there that once you scan it, they create like a um, like a, a searchable PDF that you can then go back over and find certain things or people or dates and very easily retrieve the information that you need electronically. Did you have you found the same thing? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we do, we do combine things into a single file, and that may not even be necessary now. Like you say, the tools are being developed all the time to assist with these things. Um, but I always say to, you know, the girls who are assisting with filing that remember the days when we had to actually go to the filing cabinet, pull out a folder, use the hole punch, put the pages in. Um, so whatever we're doing now, it's still such a time saving. Yeah, amazing. Um, and so when it came to the migration process, do you want to just explain um, what you went through and the, the process of getting your data from desktop to CAS 360 and maybe what it brought across for you? Yeah, look, um, it's a bit hard to remember now after five years, but I know we did it over the Christmas break. Um, so that meant um, close of business before Christmas. We made sure everything was ready to go. And when we came back in January, um, which was only a week or so later, um, everything was good to go. Um, I know I've had experiences in the past, you know, where you, you change databases and things are missing and incorrect, but I didn't have that experience um, with CAS 360. Um, it was all really easy and we were just up and running straight away. And um, how did you find the support that BGL was able to give you during that time and you know, just being accessible and answering any questions that you had? Yeah, I've always found the support from BGLs excellent. Um, never had any issues with that. Fantastic. And um, when it comes to just the efficiencies that you've gained, um, have you measured any of those? And what are some of the, the real noticeable efficiencies that you have gained from switching across? Yeah, look, we haven't measured them really, but um, look, it just goes without saying that when you're not having to print things and um, put them in envelopes, as you touched on earlier, um, there's a lot of time saving there when it's just pressing a few buttons and it's going out and same when you're getting things back. Um, you're saving on postage costs, stationary costs. Um, and as you've touched on, of course, there's software costs, but in the overall scheme of things, I think there's a, a lot of gains there. Yeah, and look, most definitely. And um, that's one of the things that we get is that, you know, a lot of the ways that we've been able to, to um, automate a lot of the processes have really made a, a significant difference to, to, to the overall function. Um, look, with every piece of software, there's always a favourite part or a favourite process. What process do you love the most? Yeah, look, I've, I've been thinking about this because you did tell me you'd ask the question and it's it's really hard to answer because I just love the software altogether, you know, <laughs> the whole package. <laughs> yeah, um, you're my new favourite client. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just to give the listeners a few things like obviously things like being able to access the ASIC debts, that's something we couldn't do in CAS desktop. Um, so it, it's great that we can be proactive about reminding clients um, when their debts are coming due. And again, that's something I can do really quickly. I might spend five, 10 minutes max twice a week, um, just sending out some reminders to clients. And again, that's all through the software. I can see previous dates that have contacted them. Yeah, and just, um, on, just on that point, though, like in the past, when it comes to that that very area of the ASIC debt reports, how much time would you have spent on that in the past? And what, what did you do traditionally when you're on CAS desktop to manage that? Yeah, well, look, we didn't give clients reminders because we didn't have access to that information. So back then it was we got an invoice in the mail we'd send it out to the client and say, look, you really need to pay this or you're going to get a second penalty. Um, CAS 360 has enabled us to be proactive and say, 
uh, your, your invoice is due, you know, in five days' time or something like that, pay now to avoid penalties completely. Yeah. And, and we've all... We've also incorporated the button to pay now. So clients can click on the button like you were showing earlier. It will take them straight into, um, I think it's Australia Post Bill Pay's website with all that information pre-entered. So it's making it really easy for the client as well. Yeah, and and look, and, and, and I, I suppose when it comes to that whole process of us pushing information to you, that really has been a real strong point of differentiation between CAS 360 and CAS desktop. Yes, definitely. Um, just the annual review process, Anne, um, how do you manage your annual reviews now? Um, so I, I send them all out myself. Um, so I'll set aside a time, you know, once a week to do that. Yep. And it's a really quick and easy process now. I've got them all up on the screen. It's got the data comparison report, so I can see straight away whether things are matching or not. Um, if there's a difference, I can review that and see whether it's something that needs correcting. Um, we prepare our invoices um, externally, but everything else, um, the email, the, the solvency resolution, the company statement, the ASIC invoice, they're all collated um, from within the software. So it's literally just hitting a few buttons and clicking send. I have opportunity to review the covering email, make any adjustments. I may want to personalise it, but in most cases, I don't need to do that. Um, have you tried using the bulk processing yet? Um, I did try that uh, when it first came out. <laughs> and the thing that I personally didn't like about it was I always copy in the accountant when I'm sending out the um yes. the end reviews and that um function didn't allow me to do that yeah so do you have a review process in in place uh no not for the end reviews um like i said i copy the accountant in so if there's something that comes to their attention that they need to alert me of that's yeah. sufficient to do that in most cases they don't want to see them so i just send them out and copy them in perfect um, so, so when it really comes to, to time savings, um, what, what are the real big ones that you've noticed in CAS 360? I mean, I've, you've mentioned the ASIC debt reports, but has there been any others that really stand out to you, like uh, in the document space or in the form preparation space, in the trust space? What's, what's been a real standout for you? Yeah, well, certainly with trust, um, because previously I was preparing all those documents uh, in Word manually. Um, so doing like unit transfers and unit allotments and that kind of thing is great because that's all automated too now. Um, and it's great to have that information so easily accessible. Um, another thing is simply with, with filing. Like I used to spend a lot of time filing copies of my correspondence, of my emails, um, making notes of um, conversations or reminders um, that I've sent clients. But now CAS360 stores all that for me. So anytime I can go in and see the dates and the emails that I've sent. So I don't need to save all those separately. Yeah, that contact history is really, mm. really neat, isn't it? So you can yes. see exactly when you've contacted your client, what you sent the client, and then pretty much there's very little area for dispute if the client comes out and says that you didn't send this to me or you didn't mm. do this yes. for me. Yeah, which is which is also really um which is really important. Um, when it comes to your client engagement, have you noticed the difference there and what differences have you noticed if you have? Yeah, look, I think clients have um, certainly em embraced the whole DocuSign. Um, they appreciate too that we can do things quickly for them. You know, they've got an urgent um, director update required. We can have forms out to them within minutes and they can sign it and we're lodging it, you know, so quickly. Um, which allows them to move on with whatever they're doing with their business or their banks and um, just find most clients send, sign things quickly and it's back to us and we don't need to be chasing things the same way that we used to. Yeah, that's fantastic. And um, I definitely had so much feedback in that area when it comes to that whole engagement piece. But one of the things that um, I, we often get asked, or I'm sure we'll go through the minds of a lot of our clients, is how much training is involved moving from the old to the new? Because one of the things that we've tried to do is preserve a lot of the ways to get to certain outcomes, 
But what we've tried to then also do is not only make it simpler, but then try to automate a lot more of that also. Mm. Yeah, well, certainly I found coming from CAS Desktop, um, it was a great product, um, but it was a bit clunky. It was hard to teach people because I found it wasn't very um, intuitive knowing what to click on. Um, coming to CAS 360, it was so much easier for people to learn. Um, being able to hover over hover over things and it tells you what to do and you know wizard processes. CAS 360 had the same things, I know, but um, I just found CAS 360. Sorry, I think I said the wrong thing there, but no. anyway, <laughs> I'm losing <laughs> track of myself. Um, certainly CAS 360 is much more simple, easier to learn. Um, we've got accountants now with their view only feature will go in and look up things for themselves. Whereas I know in the past that if they logged into CAS desktop, they wouldn't have a clue what to do. So. Yeah, and, and look, and that view only feature, as you mentioned, is a really powerful one. And you know, one of the things that I, that, and I just want to touch back on trusts, um, is that I know that a lot of accounting firms manage their trusts outside of their corporate compliance product, even in CAS desktop. Yep. But one of the features that I'd like to, to, to you know, for you to embark on a little bit is around the whole do, uh, the, the document customization. Do you do much of that? And how easy is it for you to do that and manage that? Um, so you mean uh, editing templates. templates that yes. you've provided? Yeah. Yeah, look, I have. we have edited, um, and especially with the, the emails and things, um, we've edited those, um, some of the wording and just the, the formatting of those so they're more in line with our, our usual correspondence. Um, and there is the option just to edit straight on the screen or um, in the more detailed, I can't think of what it's called, but, you know, you click the button and, you get all the behind the scenes stuff for the better, yeah, all your embedded, better word. All, all your embedded codes and everything else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm certainly not an expert in that, but um, I can fiddle around and, you know, make a few changes with that. But if you're wanting to make some basic changes to wording and things, that's really easy. And I found if I'm wanting to do something a little bit more complicated, then the support team's always helpful with that. And, um, and just the last couple of questions, but when it's coming to using CAS 360, have you ever used a live chat? Uh, yes, I think I have. Yeah, with the support team. Yeah, How would you find that experience? Because that was something that was never available in CAS desktop. And we're, we're now seeing, you know, I think the latest statistic that I had today was about eight, 800 or so chats a week. Oh, wow. <laughs> that are taking place with our clients. And it's really just a quick way for our clients to quickly engage with us to get quick yes. responses to things. How did you find that experience? Yeah, I found it excellent. So if it's just a simple question, um, I will use that. If it's more complicated, I'll, I'll lodge a call. Um, but simple questions, I have used it, and it's fantastic to get your, inf your answer right then and there so you can keep doing with what you're doing rather than having to wait for an answer. Yeah, and that's one of the real advantages of CAS 360 also is that the, with it comes also the uh, more support options, which allows you to get quicker responses to things too, which is we know has, has proven to be a real big hit with many of our clients. Yeah, and also um, the community forum I found is great where you can actually get on and speak to other users and um, ideas about the way that they're doing things. So. Yep. And look, and one of the things that we really pride ourselves to on Anne, and I, I believe that you can vouch for this, is just the, if you do are having issues or you do need to reach out to a senior person, they're always available to you. Yes, yes, yeah, certainly. Because I know that you've probably reached out to Warren and stuff in the past a little bit or maybe had some questions. And Yes, yeah. I've sometimes even when I've lodged, you know, feedback or something, a Warren will respond to me directly and say, can you give me a bit more info on this? And that's one thing I found great too is that you are so responsive to the feedback from your users and constantly releasing new updates and improvements. And that really is a really important part of who we are, right? Like our products are why people transact with us, but who we are around the services and the people and the experience that we deliver, that's what we want people really connecting with because that's really, really important. Um, what would you say to people, and this will be my last question, I promise, what would you say to someone here who's listening who, say, who might say, look, I just I don't want to do this, or how would you encourage them to take the step? Sure. Well, um, look, I've got to admit that I was a bit hesitant. Um, I've had the experience before where 
the software um, people come out and they give you this wonderful presentation with all the whiz bang features and it all looks great. And then once you switch over and you start using it on a daily basis, you start to find um, the shortcomings with the software. And, um, you know, I, I'd used CAS desktop a long time and it did its job really well. I had lots of confidence in it and I was a bit hesitant with this new product. I thought, you know, it's, it's new. Um, will it have the same level of functionality as the as CAS desktop had? Um, but um, we took the plunge, we made the change and I never looked back. I never regretted that decision. Um, there was only improvements. The, the functionality was all there. And in the past five years, it's just continued to grow and bring out new features. So yeah, I'd have no hesitation at all in, in recommending the switch. And thank you. And like, just for the audience, we didn't really, I mean, I gave Anne some of these, these questions, but we didn't pre-rehearse any of this because we wanted this to come directly from a, a great and long time user. And I just want you to take the confidence in the fact that not only can you do it, but you can do it with a great level of confidence and know that you're going to be able to get far better outcomes by taking the step. You will be better off. You will benefit from it significantly. Um, and as Anne's pointed out, you know, don't just don't don't just don't, don't don't sit on the fence anymore. Take the step if you if if you can, because it will make a significant difference to the way that you go about your corporate compliance work. Um, and I will bring you in um, in a couple of moments, especially around the director ID stuff. But I'm just going to move on to transitioning from desktop. So there's a couple of things that I'd like to point out here. Firstly, we are there to help you and to serve you in making sure the migration is simple. We will do all that for you. We'll bring the data across for you. We will include the documents. We'll include the data. We'll include your history. And the beautiful thing that we also offer <clears throat> is a dedicated account manager and client success specialist who will be with you throughout the whole process. One of the things that I really pride myself in at BGL is accessibility. And what I mean by that is that if you ever get stuck or you're ever in trouble or you need some help, we're always there and we're always accessible. You matter to us. You've mattered to us in the past. You matter to us today. You matter to us in the future. Who we, that's a really, who we are, a really important part of that is our client experience and touch points that we have. And we have the best people in the right places ensuring that they deliver to you great touch points and great support. As part of the process, we'll also provide you with great training and education. There's lots of courses available from on the community to the self-help within the system to there's also paid training, which at the moment is still virtual. You can avail yourself to that also. And one of the things that I can guarantee you is that it's fully backed by BGL support, which I know many of you have been using for a long time and have had a wonderful experience with it. So when it comes to what you'll gain from CAS 360, very simple. Um, it is four or five main things. One, a continued experience of um, in the product with um, people who are running the product that are proven, that have known and done this stuff for a long, long time, and that you know and can have the confidence in the people who are running the products, making the decisions and driving the compliance features and outcomes within the software. We're proven in the space. You can rely on us. You can count on us to ensure that we deliver to you the best of in the industry. What you'll also get is, I believe, better client experience. You'll also be able to reduce your ASIC fines. I can assure you that. And I know that many of you, when it comes to the ASIC fines, many of you are still paying your clients ASIC fines because you don't want to lose the client. Um, and we want to try and minimize that. And you, can, you'll, you will do that. Um, there will be substantial efficiencies in your processes. And Anne's gone through many of those. Your staff onboarding is quite easy and you'll be able to transition across very easily. And there'll be no more servers and associated IT costs with maintaining the infrastructure because we do all that for you. We manage the security. We've got multi-factor authentication in place. We've got so many great things in place to ensure that when it comes to the maintenance, we've got you covered. 
Now I am going to go into the director IDs frame a moment, <clears throat> but at the moment I'm just going to just launch a poll regarding BGL contacting you for more information or making contact with you about transitioning from CAS desktop to CAS 360. So I'll launch the poll and then I'm just going to ask Anne a couple of questions around the director ID and the process that she has gone through. So Anne, just um, as people fill in the poll, I just want you to spend a couple of minutes just going through the director ID process that we've built in CAS 360 and how it's made a difference to you? Sure. Well, um, it's it's one of the features that I really like is that we have that filter there uh, to see when people's, um, the due date for registration is. As we're registering new companies now, um, we have to get used to reminding clients that they've only got 28 days to register. Um, so it's fantastic being able to filter um, those clients and see at a glance who's registered and who hasn't. Um, of course, it does. Um, it, that info doesn't come in automatically. The client has to email us um, their number and we insert that into the software, but then we've got that permanent record. Um, and also, of course, um, BGL have created the, the emails um, that we can easily send to clients uh, with a few clicks of a button and keep a record of when they've been contacted um, and as we've mentioned earlier, of course, we can edit those emails as well. Yeah, and um, just maybe how, how have your clients received that, that information about the director IDs and how much time do you think it saved you from having to go through the process of doing all of that manually? <laughs> yeah, well, look, we did send a general email to our clients. We send out um, regular newsletters. Um, so as a first step, we've done that. We've sent it to, to our uh, entire client database and they're starting to filter back. We're starting to get a few responses there. Um, majority of clients, of course, haven't acted yet. Um, but certainly with the new registrations we're doing, we're sending those emails from within CAS 360 and clients are responding. So it certainly streamlined the whole process. And I think just not having to think about it so much that I know the dates are there. I don't have to start you know, figuring out dates, keeping a record, writing them down. It's all there um, for me just to, to have a look at. Fantastic. Well, look, um, I just want to, on behalf of BGL Corporate Solutions, Anne, thank you, not only for your incredible loyalty over such a long time, but, you know, we honour clients like yourself and I know many that are listening because you've been with us for a long part of the journey. Um, you've provided such great, wonderful feedback, Anne, and um, you've made a difference to who we are as a business too and the product that we develop. And it's because of your contribution and commitment to what we do that we can further and better improve ourselves on a daily basis. And just thank you, Anne, for taking the time. Thank you for your insights. Thank you for just being so open with us. Oh, and thanks, truly... Daniel. It's, um, it's a pleasure to um, support you because it, it's a great product. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy to support it. And hopefully um, the information I've given has been helpful to the listeners. And yeah, like I said earlier, um, I wouldn't have any hesitation in recommending it. Thank you so much, Anne. I appreciate it. Um, and um, look, just when it comes to this webinar, obviously we're going to close it in a moment. I'm going to keep the poll open for another half a minute or so. But on my screen there is um, the details. Um, I'm more than happy for you to email me direct at danieltbglcorp.com.au. Um, if you'd like to connect with me on Twitter, you can do that at, at the Tremor. Or if you'd just like to connect with me on LinkedIn, I'd love to be connected with you. Um, I love hearing from clients, I love hearing from prospects, and I love helping people out. And um, I can with confidence say that the whole team here feels exactly the same. So if you're still considering it, take your time to consider it. If you'd like to move across to, to, to CAS 360, we would love to help you. But most important, just know that we've got you covered, and you can take great confidence in the process and in the people behind the process to ensure that your transition is as smooth and as easy as possible, and that we're able to work together to deliver optimal client outcomes, which is ideally what we all want. So we'll be around for the next four or five minutes to go through any questions that you may have. Please ask those through the Q&A and we'll answer those. If not, thank you for joining us today. 
Um, we appreciate you and the time taken to listen in on this webinar. Um, thank you also for just your longstanding support on CAS Desktop. And we hope that going forward that we can still remain to be connected and to, to be of service to you and your team. On behalf of BGL, Corporate Solutions and everybody in this team, thank you.